Now, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the approach that AMD has taken is fundamentally different than our competitor. Uh, we don't just believe you have to go out and build fabs uh, to be successful. We believe that you have to maximize the investments that you put in place, leverage everything you can out of those investments, and then ensure that the facilities that we're running have the agility and flexibility uh, to react to the market in a way uh, that makes us m much more efficient and much more capable uh, than the competition. A metric to keep in mind is that at the end of 2005, we had one 200 millimeter fab that had 20% market share versus our competitor who had four 300 millimeter fabs. So when you look at the market share per fab, as a metric, we believe that our efficiencies uh, come, come through loud and clear. And as we now migrate into 300 millimeter manufacturing and also go from being a single fab company to a multiple fab company, we believe that all that know-how will manifest itself and allow us to make our fabs much more efficient. And that's important because basically it, it costs the same amount of money to build a fab, whether it's AMD or Intel. And if we can get more output from that fab than the competition, then obviously that gives us a competitive advantage. Now, one myth is that AMD is behind on our 65 nanometer transition. That is absolutely not true. We not only introduced products in December of uh, 2005, which is when we said we would introduce them, but we were able to introduce those products at the highest yield levels than any prior generation from the uh, facilities that we have in Dresden. 06. 06. And if you look through all of our generations of technology, uh, starting with 90 nanometer in FAB 36, we introduced that above mature yield levels. And then when we introduced 65 nanometer, that was actually even higher than our 90 nanometer uh, capability. So the idea that we are not yielding 65 nanometer is absolutely wrong. We not only feel very comfortable with where we're at, we're actually ahead of the plan, and uh, we are now doing 100% starts on 65 nanometer in FAB 36. We have reached the crossover point to where more of our product is 65 than 90 nanometer and we are in the process of completing the conversion of chartered semiconductors six to 65 nanometer as well. So as we move into the second half of this year, uh, essentially everything that will be uh, produced in FAB 36 and then also in chartered will be on 65 nanometer technology. And understand that AMD has a history of doing things a generation ahead. We introduced dual core at 90 nanometer, put that in the market, native dual core, it took our competitor to 65 nanometer to be able to do native dual core. We're going to do native quad core at 65 nanometer. Our competitor has to wait to 45 nanometer. There's a tremendous cost associated with introducing a new uh, technology and of course we believe that being able to give our customers the capabilities they need in a technology generation that uh, not only gives us the capability to deliver that product, but do it in the most economical way uh, makes a lot of sense for both us and our customers. Everything's on track with quad core production. Some of our competitor statements and they say, well, you know, the reason we're doing two separate die rather than a monolithic die is because there's uh, manufacturing efficiencies in doing so. I have yet to meet a customer or an end user that cares much about my manufacturing efficiency. What they care about is the value that we deliver to them. And by really bringing that quad core solution, and in a monolithic manner, it significantly increased the performance. Our competitor seems to always have to uh, go to the next generation of technology to deliver an equivalent level of performance, and obviously that costs a lot of money. And AMD's model of using our partnership with IBM, it, it's part of our asset light you know, mentality of having uh, a partner where we don't have to go out and invest in a separate pilot line. We bring our technologies into manufacturing uh, during the late stage of our development, and when, because we do that, uh, we can make our processes very robust, and that's one of the reasons why we don't need that pilot line, yet we can bring our you know, technologies to production at mature yields. And there is no one else in the industry that can make that claim. So another myth that's out there is that a AMD is 18 months behind on 45 nanometer. That's absolutely not true. We will be introducing 45 nanometer 18 months after we introduced uh, 65 nanometer Middle of next year, summer, or uh, second half of, of 2008 is when uh, 45 nanometer will become a reality. If you look at our competitor statements, they claim that sometime later this year they'll be doing 45 nanometer. So you're really talking about a six month difference between when they do 45 and when we do 45. Everything that I just talked about in terms of our technology generation transitions r remains true for 45 nanometer. Uh, we believe, once again, uh, proof is in the pudding. This is a 45 nanometer wafer out of Dresden using 
immersion lithography. This is uh, what we call our Typhoon test chip. It has SRAM as well as some core logic. Uh, we're totally on track, I'll pass that around too, uh, for where we want to be with our 45 nanometer transition. Uh, pilot lines are running in Dresden today. Key points on 45 nanometer, we will be using immersion lithography. Uh, there's another myth out there that immersion is too risky for 45 nanometer. Um, once again, that is just not the case. We are getting equivalent yields on immersion lithography to our dry lithography. Using immersion is fundamentally more efficient than the other approach our competitor is using, which is uh, double exposure. Double exposure increases the number of masking layers, increases uh, the cycle time of your products and frankly increases the cost because it's taking uh, many more process steps to produce the same result. So AMD once again has a history of introducing technologies ahead of the, the rest of the industry. We did copper interconnects on 180, the industry did it at 130. We did low K dielectrics at 130, the industry did it at 90. And of course we'll be introducing immersion at 45 whereas a lot of the industry is waiting to 32 or, or some point beyond For that. those that follow manufacturing, lean manufacturing has been you know, out there for, for many years, uh, but it's never been applied in our industry. Now the reason we can apply it is because we have good yields. When you have good yields, you can start looking at how do you make yourself more productive. And so some of the, the work that has started in Dresden, uh, things like I alluded to the 20% market share with one fab, that was a direct result of our lean initiatives. We also have world-class days per masking layer, world-class productivity, uh, labor productivity, we've been able to increase by over 72% in Dresden by making things more efficient, eliminating waste, and really just getting people focused on how they do their tasks and only doing value-added activities.